In today's video, we're going over three mistakes that I made personally in ophthalmology so you don't make the same ones. Let's go. What is up, pupils? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. I'm a first year ACE Oppers oculoplastic surgery fellow. And on the channel, I focus on everything about medicine, residency, ophthalmology, life as a doctor, life as an oculoplastic surgery fellow. And going through that process, I'm bringing you guys along for the ride so you can see what it's like. So you don't make the mistakes that I will make along the way inevitably. Uh, and that's so maybe you can enjoy it. So let's get into the video. Today, we're going over the three mistakes that I feel like I personally made during residency, things that I would have done different. So you guys can do, do it right from the beginning, essentially. If you guys do find this video informative or helpful, leave a like on it and please subscribe to the channel. So the first mistake that I made is thinking that I should be respected, I guess, as a doctor right out of medical school. So we go through medical school, four hard years of very advanced education, and then we become a doctor. And the thought is, at least for me, it was that, oh, okay, I'm a doctor now. People in the hospital, like the nurses and the staff and the other physicians will respect me as a doctor. Not true. It's not how it works. You were jumping from the top of one totem pole back to the bottom of another. That is essentially medicine, is climbing up to the top of one ladder, jumping off to the bottom of another, and then just continuing that process. So when you leave medical school, you start residency, you're starting right at the bottom of another ladder, right at the bottom rung, and you have to build your way back up again. So the mistake I made was thinking that I should get some respect as a physician, as a doctor, and I think just, you know, we should, as just general common decency, among people but the problem is you can't take it personally you can't internalize it when people don't treat you with respect as a resident or as a trainee because they're just not going to and so i just would kind of go into it with the understanding that even though you're a doctor now people are not going to view you with a lot of respect in the hospital overall as a trainee at least that's been my experience um, and so if you go into it with that mindset and just realize that you do have to get through this. It's more putting your head down, putting your nose to the grindstone and getting through it. It makes your life easier. I know it's not a pretty reality or a pretty realization to come to, but uh, it's one that I came to the hard way. So maybe you guys won't have to do that as well. All right, guys, if you've made it this far in the video, go ahead and comment down in the comment section the word eyeball so that I'll know that you made it this far in the video. The second mistake that I made during my residency training in ophthalmology was not knowing or rather realizing too late how to best learn things and learn for the right reasons. I've made videos on this in the past, but essentially what I'm talking about is that even into residency, even you know this far into education, I was still locked into the mindset of learning for tests, and that is the wrong way to do it. And it took me halfway through residency to realize this, but we are trained throughout our entire educational process to learn to do well on a test. And we do well on tests and that propels us to the next stage. So there is some value in that. But at some point you have to start learning for the sake of being able to be good at your job and being able to be an effective doctor. And so it's a different type of learning and it's something that I wish I had realized sooner. Uh, in the first year and a half or so of residency, I kept trying to learn for tests and not trying to learn so that I would be a good doctor. And by the time I realized that, it was just like a paradigm shift in my mind and really a game changer for me. But it's something that I wish I'd realized sooner. And I have other videos talking about this and, and about why I think it's a better way to learn and a better way to approach attaining, encoding, and um, keeping knowledge that you can have readily available at your fingertips to use when you come faced with these real life situations where you're having to treat a patient. But that's the second mistake that I think I personally made in residency was not realizing that it's no longer for tests. It's for being a good doctor. And when you realize that, the sooner you realize that, the better your life will be. And not only the better you will be as a physician, but the better your life will be in general. At least that was my uh, experience with it. The third mistake that I made in residency was not realizing sooner the importance of finding mentors that could possibly guide me through the next step. So residency is short and painful often at the time that you're doing it, uh, but you just have to realize that it is finite and that you are trying to get to the next step. So finding someone who can mentor you to get to that next step 
as successfully as possible is hugely important. And I fortunately just kind of fell into that with someone who kind of helped me do that. But there was no structured mechanism within my program to kind of facilitate that process. And it wasn't something that was in my mind as something that I needed to be doing was seeking out someone that could do that for me. Um, but fortunately, I just happened to be working on a project that I thought was fun. I was trying to make an instrument for one of my attendings uh, because I thought that it would be a cool thing to do just because I thought it was fun. It was not to get me anywhere. It wasn't to, to like get CV points or anything. I just thought it was cool. Um, but through that process, I kind of found someone who could mentor me uh, and help guide me into a really good kind of setup, which was, uh, ended up being the preceptor that I now work with as an oculoplastic surgery fellow, the person that I'm paired with. Uh, and I'm really glad that I, it worked out that way. So, but that's the thing that I didn't realize in the beginning in residency is that you need to find a mentor. Mentors are so important. And I don't honestly know the best way to tell you guys to go about finding them. Um, but I would just say that try to find them, figure out a way to find someone who will help you, whether it be after you've provided some value to them um, or whatever, but you need to find these people. And a lot of times they are very willing to help you, but you have to be willing to receive that help and you have to be open to going to finding them, I think is just the key thing. But that's the third thing is I didn't realize the importance of having someone that can mentor you to the next step, someone that's done it, someone that has your best interest at heart. That is hugely key and being successful in ophthalmology and really just in medicine and even life in general. All right, and bonus one, this is actually the reverse, is something that I did in residency that I think some people didn't necessarily do uh, that could be a mistake not to do. Fortunately, this is one thing that I did do, and that is I really pushed myself on technique in surgery. So I really tried a lot of techniques that are more difficult and things that you would probably learn later on in your practice when you're out uh, as an attending physician, I really pushed myself on the technique. So I tried primary chopping and cataract surgery. I tried to really push uh, what I could do surgically and technique wise in surgery. And it made me vastly better as a resident cataract surgeon uh, at the time. And I think that's something that people should do. And it is a mistake not to do is to push yourself um, as a surgical trainee. Don't just rely on your attendings to push you. You have to push yourself if you're really going to get good at it. And so fortunately, that's something that I tried to do. Uh, so I think it would be a mistake not to. All right, guys, those are three of the mistakes that I think I personally made in residency, in ophthalmology residency. But you live and learn. But fortunately, I can hopefully kind of give you guys an insight into this. So maybe you won't make the same mistakes. But in the end, you got to go make the mistakes. Um, you just do. It's not going to stick if you don't make some mistakes on your own, but maybe you won't make these mistakes. Anyways, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please leave a like on it. Please subscribe to the channel. I'd much appreciate it. And uh, leave a big thumbs up on the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.